Welcome all my fellow Washington brethren and sister. I am your man and resident Washington football fan. Lou, thank you for joining me here on the Washington Football Report. So breaking news uh, this morning, Reuben Foster, uh, Washington football team linebacker, finally activated off of the pup list. This is something that we've been waiting on. If I were you, I wouldn't get too excited about this. We've been down this road before. Cautious optimism is always what I, t I tend to lean towards when you get this kind of news with this type of player who's dealt with injuries in the past. Uh, we've been down this road before with Junior Gallette, a guy that we had high hopes for, um, got injured when he got here, got injured again, and then we finally got to see Junior Gallette, and by the time we got to him, he wasn't the same guy. I I'm not saying that's what's going to happen with Reuben Foster, but just know that there is precedence here, and so you don't need to get overly excited but do bask in the fact that he is now on, on schedule to be ready for week one. And this is a guy that we were excited about and looking forward to seeing in the burgundy and gold. And so now we may get that opportunity. Again, keep your fingers crossed that there are no setbacks and that he is ready to go for Philadelphia week number one. We won't get to see him. Obviously, no preseason games. So uh, that's something to keep note of is that we won't get to see what he will be. And I don't know if he's even going to start at this point. They may choose to kind of work him back slowly. Maybe they give him um, th the green light, throw him in there and allow him to go full throttle from the jump. They had talked about him looking good. Uh, him and Alex Smith, remember both of those guys were on the pup list and, and they were the two high profile guys on the pup list. And they talked about how well both of those guys were moving. So this is not a surprise that this is coming out right now. Now the real question is, can he stay healthy? How fast can he integrate into the defense? And is he going to be a middle linebacker with the green dot on his helmet being the communicator of the defense? Or is he going to be a weak side linebacker? I think that's the real question now. And is he going to start? Uh, we don't know any of those answers. We probably won't know where he stands until we get to the depth chart. And that won't be until later into August. So a lot of questions, not a lot of answers. But the only thing you need to worry about right now is that Reuben Foster has been activated. He's been medically cleared to resume football activities and practice with the team on the field and not on the side field and not taking mental reps as he has been doing to start out camp. So uh, this is great news. Finally, some good news for the Washington football team and its fans. Hopefully it stays that way. But Ruben Foster activated, ready to rock and roll. And now the questions start to uh, amass. Is he an inside backer? Is he a weak side backer? Is he going to start? Is he going to be the leader of this defense? Is he going to wear the green dot? Is he going to be the lead communicator? A lot of questions, not a ton of answers, but right now just be excited that this guy has been medically cleared and we may actually get to see what Reuben Foster can bring to the table once and for all. And remember, he's in the last year of his deal. The Reds, the Washington football team elected not to pick up his fifth year option. So for all intents and purposes, this is a contract season for Reuben Foster. So uh, he needs to ball out this year. So let's see what he can bring to the table. Let's hope he's able to stay healthy with no setbacks. Also wanted to talk about this, and I was going to do a separate video, but I think this is the perfect video to do this on. Uh, Morgan Moses, who we all know has been very outspoken. Last year, he had a, a whole radio segment uh, every week uh, on, I think, um, uh, the, the fan uh, up in D.C., and um, I think it was on 106.7, the fan, he had a, a radio spot every single week, I think with the junkies, if I'm not mistaken. So we know he's very outspoken, said some things. He was uh, out in front of the whole Adrian Peterson controversy week one uh, versus the Eagles where he was um, inactive, and, and he was very boisterous there. And, and, and all throughout the season last year, Morgan Moses was very opinionated, and I know a lot of you aren't the biggest fans of Momo. I told you guys to get off of his back. I'm really excited for him this offseason in particular. This is the first offseason in a while that he hasn't had to nurse a bunch of injuries. He's actually been able to work on himself, his body, get his craft right. And you heard uh, Brandon Sheriff talk about this. Uh, maybe you didn't. 
I didn't bring it up, but I'll bring it up now that uh, Morgan Moses has a gym in his home and uh, Brandon Sheriff was able to work out with him during the coronavirus uh, pandemic when it first kicked off and get uh, get some good workouts in with Morgan Moses. And Moses uh, has been doing some work in his gym to the fact and the point that he has dropped 13 pounds. He's down to 317 in some of the best shape of his career. He's looking to come in and do some big things this year. But that's not the big takeaway from his presser after practice some days ago. The biggest takeaway from that for me was that he thinks Jerron Christian or excuse me, Jaron Christian, is ready to take over the left tackle position. I talked about Ron Rivera continuing to praise Jaron Christian and how he's developed and how he's looked good and how he seems to be a guy that is ready to compete for the left tackle position. We all have assumed that it was going to be Sadiq Charles, uh, the Washington football team's third round selection from this past spring's draft, but uh, not so fast, my friends. And and we've talked about Jaron Christian and how disappointed we've been. Um, a second round pick that the Redskins made some years ago, or excuse me, third round pick the Red, uh, uh, Washington football team made some years ago that just hasn't panned out to this point. He seems like more of a swing backup tackle than a starter in this league at this point. But injuries and other things have really um, prohibited him from really showing what he's fully capable of. Maybe this is finally the offseason. Uh, Morgan Moses said that uh, Jaron Christian has been working with Trent Williams all offseason out in Houston. He's in great shape. He's learned the tricks of the trade from one of the best in the game. And, and Morgan Moses seems to think that this is the season that Jaron Christian, or excuse me, Jaron Christian, finally hits the ground running and doesn't look back. Maybe that is the case. And maybe we do have the left tackle of the future on the roster, and it's not Sadiq Charles, but rather Jaron Christian. And if that's the case, maybe Sadiq Charles is the right tackle of the future. Maybe Sadiq Charles is a guard. Who's to say right now there's a lot of moving pieces along that offensive line that we don't have the answers to right now, left tackle being the most important. However, I, I like the fact that Jaron Christian may be ready. I want hyper competition at left tackle because I want the best guy possible protecting Dwayne Haskins blindside come week one versus the Philadelphia Eagles and moving forward. So um, if Jaron Christian is ready to take that step that we've all been waiting for him to take, uh, kudos to him, more power to him. And that may be the best thing that could happen to the franchise along the offensive line here in the upcoming uh, weeks. So that was something that I took from his presser that I thought was very pertinent. And then one piece of news that I wanted to mention, I was, I was so much had transpired in the last 72 hours that I forgot to mention this on all the shows that I had done, but uh, ex-Washington uh, football uh, team member Jordan Reed signed an incentive-laden one-year deal with the San Francisco 49ers. There was much debate whether he would ever play football again. Uh, I know a lot of you had been tracking that. I was as well. He did sign, and, and it makes a ton of sense. He follows Kyle Shanahan, a guy that knows him very well. Uh, they, they know he's not much of a blocker. They've got George Kittle. They've got a, a slew of guys that can get it done in the blocking department. They've got arguably the best tight end in all of football in George Kittle right now. And so he's not going to be asked to block. He's just going to be asked to catch the football, which is what Jordan Reed does best. So uh, good luck to Jordan Reed. Hopefully he stays healthy. Uh, upset that it couldn't, you know, I wish it could have ended a different way here. But at the end of the day, ha he wasn't able to stay healthy. And uh, much like Alex Smith, I really would have preferred if he never played football again. But again, it's his prerogative. It's his choice. He wants to continue to play. Uh, he's, he signed an incentive-laden deal, so if he, it's really just tied to his production and his ability to stay healthy and produce. And if he does that at a high level, he'll get paid. If he doesn't, um, they'll be able to get out of the contract with really no consequence. So we'll see what happens there for good old Jay Reed, as he is now a San Francisco 49er following Trent Williams out to the Bay Area. So that's going to do it for me, your man. Louis T, thank you for joining me on this Washington football report. Remember, I am a Washington football fan etched in burgundy and gold. My Washington pride will never die. Washington pride will never fold until we meet again. Hail to the Washington football team. Trent Williams had a little chuckle and laugh at the expense of the name, saying it sounds weird. We don't care what you think, Trent. 
just play your football out there. Like people are taking pot shots at us. I don't know if you read what um, um, Preston Smith had to say about the FedEx field fans. Look, we know it's a trash environment. We know that the fans, uh, you guys did that by losing a bunch of games. So you just play football for the Green Bay Packers. Shut up and leave us alone, okay? All right, thanks. We've had enough grief. We don't need any more bullets being shot at us from afar uh, by ex-players, okay? Just continue to be a beast for the Green Bay Packers and leave us alone and let us do our thing in peace. Thank you very much. I'm your man, Louis T, signing off. Until next time, you guys, take care, stay safe, and we'll reconvene at a later date and time. And remember, if something happens, any breaking news, this face will be all up in your space. But until then, you guys, take care. Have a good one and make sure that you don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button if you haven't already done so. You guys, take care.